I have a subject to talk about that I feel ashamed about, to say the very least. And it's pretty hard, so let's, uh, let's start with a very, very simple, catchy, you know, first 30 seconds of the show. I was wrong about James Comey. Everything I've said about him across the last 12 months or so has been based on a bias and a limitation of my own understanding the last months. I was wrong. I was quite wrong and the clearest evidence of that mistake, of my error, came out in the, uh, the IG report that everyone's been discussing. And I feel it very important to cover this, so let's um, make sure that my browser mode, my browser is set up correctly. No, that's not the window it's supposed to be. Properties, the other one, okay, and here. Here we go. Alright, so I was going through the IG report. I've been tearing this apart. Hello, Kaho, and um, all you others who are showing up. It's wonderful to see you here. Thank you for coming by. Let's all uh, let's all take a minute and just appreciate the fact that we can be wrong. I think that's really important because it's what I've ended up with here. Um, I want to find the shit. I just I just lost my place. Damn it! Uh, skip up, skip down. There we go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So, um, me and several other people, most of the world at this point. Most of the, the right-wing world, you might call them, have, have been pretty much up Comey's ass. We blame Comey because, from our perspective, it's Comey's fault that Clinton was never arrested or put in jail, indicted. The word indict, indictment is the word of the day. Ah, indictment, indictment! It's what everyone wants right now. Uh, most people are overlooking the fact that this is a this is an investigator's report. This is the Inspector General producing a report on which the DOJ, the FBI, and other, uh, well, excuse me, not the FBI, and other prosecuting forces, the, the, the second half of the legal system, uh, can use to bring forth indictments, to bring forth grand jury impanelments, right? This is what you know, this is how things work. This is why the police are separate from the lawyers. This is why the FBI is separate from the DOJ, and so on and so on. But I came across this. Now, it, it also appears in the executive uh, summary, but the executive summary version of it is pretty limited, so fuck that one. We're going to read straight from page 240. Comey discussed the draft public statements in meetings with members of the mid-year team with senior FBI officials at various times in May and June of 2016. These discussions included whether to do a separate statement at all. In addition, these specific language revisions discussed section 3.b and c above. Uh, don't have to worry about that. Comey said that by t July, or excuse me, June 27th, 2016, the date of Lynch's tarmac meeting with former President Clinton, he was 90% there, like highly likely, quotes, in terms of deciding to deliver the statement. Of course, the statement we're talking about here was the infamous, uh, the infamous statement that uh, got turned into so many different memes at this point, in which he stated that no charges would be pursued against Clinton. His wording was actually very specific, and I never considered this at the time. 
I, I was pretty stupid to not consider his wording because he didn't say we're not bringing charges against Hillary Clinton. He said that he said that charges will not be brought against Hillary Clinton. Despite this, charges will not be brought against Hillary Clinton. And I never thought about the wording. And when I started reading this, it really hit me that we've been crawling up James Comey's ass as a scapegoat when really we've been focused entirely on getting answers instead of letting the people who do their jobs do their jobs. Despite this, Comey and other S F senior FBI officials continued to engage their department counterparts in discussions about how a, to credibly announce a declination. These discussions occurred at various levels, between Comey and Yates, between McCabe and Carlin, between Strzok and Laufman. At no point, at no time, did anyone from the FBI inform anyone from the department, this being the Department of Justice, that Comey was even considering making a statement on his own, let alone that he had already drafted such a statement. Department witnesses all, at all levels told us they believed that shortly after the interview of former Secretary Clinton was completed, the department and the FBI would work together to deliver some sort of coordinated statement and that Comey would be involved. Yates told the OIG that her understanding was that they would be all holding hands and jumping off the bridge together. Comey stated that from time to time, he, uh, from the time he first conceived of making a separate statement, he intended to deliver it without coordinating with it, the department. Remember that detail for me, please. He told the OIG that he made a conscious decision not to tell department leadership about his plans to go it alone because he was concerned that they would instruct him not to do it. Comey admitted that he concealed his intentions from the Department of Justice until the morning of his pr press conference and instructed his staff to do the same. To make it impractical, impractical for department leadership to prevent him from delivering his statements. We found that this was extraordinary and insubordinate for Comey to conceal his intentions from his superiors, the Attorney General and Deputy Attorney General for the admitted purpose of preventing them from telling him not to make the statement and to instruct his subordinates in the FBI to do the same. Comey waited until the morning of the press conference to inform Lynch and Yates of his plans to hold one without them and did so only after notifying the press. As a result, Lynch's office learned about Comey's plans via press inquiries rather than from Comey. Moreover, when Comey, came, when Comey spoke with Lynch, he did not tell her what he intended to say from his statements. This is fucking fascinating. And I feel like I need to apologize directly to James Comey about this. Because what we saw, what the media showed us, and what those of us who have been obsessed with digging up information across the last year or two years, We've all been looking at him as the linchpin, as the person with all the control, but he wasn't. Sally Yates and Loretta Lynch fucking had him by the collar the entire fucking time. And he committed insubordination against them in order to make his statement because Yates and Lynch wouldn't have let him make that statement otherwise. I want you to think about that for just a second. Comey didn't fuck over Trump. I mean, yes, he was involved in uh, a lot of things that were directly involved in investigating and fucking with Trump. But when Comey came out and made his statement, he wasn't letting Hillary Clinton skate. He wasn't letting Hillary Clinton slide. No, he was making sure that the information that he found got out and wasn't silenced by, Lin by Lynch and Yates. He made sure that it got said. If anything, 
Comey helped all of us. He may not have helped Trump that much, a little bit. It certainly moved things in Trump's direction when he did this, when you look back at it in the long run. But what he, Comey was trying to do was honorable. And for all the shit I've talked about James Comey, I do feel like I have to apologize because he wanted us to know and he knew that it would get silenced otherwise. He made his public statement without coordinating with the department. In fact, Comey cited several factors that said he influenced his decision to make a statement on his own and without coordinating with the department. In addition to public comments made by former President Obama and his White House press secretary about the mid-year investigation, Comey cited four things he said that caused him to be concerned that Lynch could not credibly participate in announcing a declination. Her alleged instruction to call the mid-year investigation a matter in the meeting held on September 28th of 2015. Remember that, you remember uh, the, the changeover from calling the Clinton investigation an investigation to calling it a matter? Yeah, that wasn't his doing. That was Lynch's doing. Which, uh, which Comey said made his spider sense tingle and caused him to worry that she's carrying water for the Clinton campaign. <clears throat> Concerns that highly classified information referencing Lynch will be publicly released and would impact her credibility. The tarmac meeting between Lynch and former President Bill Clinton, and the fact that Lynch was appointed by a president that was the same political party as former Secretary Clinton. We found none of these reasons persuasive, either standing alone or considered together as a basis for deviating from well-established department policies and acting unilaterally in a way intentionally designed to avoid, designed to avoid superstition by department leadership over his actions. Now, what you're seeing here is the OIG, uh, you're seeing Horowitz say, as far as official policy goes, as far as how you're supposed to do it, he did everything wrong here. He broke the rules. He intentionally acted in a way to avoid supervision. What he did was he went rogue. He knew that he was subject to the control and the manipulation of Loretta Lynch and Sally Yates. So what did he do? He broke the rules, not because it would look good on him. And oh God, has it not looked good on him? But because the American people deserved to know. And I, like so many other people, shot the messenger. Good Lord, I mean, it, it hurts. That's why I threw together this stream. That's why I threw together this stream because I, I, I after, you know, going through all the other, you know, mat, all the other matters involved, going through old news stories about uh, James Comey's announcement of this about the Clinton email investigation. I realized that Comey was really locked between a rock and a hard place. It's upsetting to say the least, but more so it's giving me a lens into this that I've, I've basically been blind to. None, none the least of which because of all the other stressors in my life and the fact that producing content, that digging, that understanding these kinds of things gives me a level of fulfillment. I felt a need to be fulfilled and got so obsessed that I, I started slipping away from, from reality, to put it bluntly. I started falling into this, this for lack of a better phrase, conspiratorial mind that goes far beyond what is healthy. And I've, I mean, you guys have seen the con the quality of my content drop over the last six, eight months. 
My content has been shit, and it's because my head's not been in the right place. Everyone right now is bitching to high heaven because of this report, but there's no, but we're not getting any indictments. Why aren't we seeing indictments? Well, I don't think we're going to be seeing indictments being announced until the actual team is ready. The prosecutor who is handling this information, Huber, he's not a man known to leak. And that's, that's an important detail here. James Comey did leak things to people, and this alone means that Comey is not a perfect man. He has made some very severe mistakes in all of this. He's fucked up badly, and he's shown certain amounts of partisan behaviors. But that doesn't mean that 100% of what he's done is bad. James Comey's a patriot, an absolute and wonderful patriot. He's fucked up, and he probably deserves to be investigated further for those specific fuck-ups, specifically leaking information to, uh, to uh, the press. But we've been living in a culture of leaks for so long that I've gotten comfortable with it. I've gotten lazy on it. I've been taking advantage of these leaks and the ease with which they give me to present information and not even thinking about the fact that these leaks are coming from very partisan sources themselves. Why are there no investi or why are there no indictments? You don't know they're not in there aren't indictments. I don't know they're not indictments. These indictments are sealed and Jeff Sessions a man that everyone hates because he's not playing the fucking television game, because he's not playing the go out to the mainstream media and do this in the court of public opinion way, isn't leaking. But as was slightly leaked just today, John Wolf is being removed due to investigations in the House of Representatives and Senate into leaks. This is extremely important. The leaks have to stop. No matter how easy they make my life, the leaks absolutely have to stop. These people have to be able to do their jobs no matter how fucking long it takes. Rome wasn't built in a day, nor was the United States, and it won't all be solved in a year. Donald Trump can't solve all of America's problems in a year. The people he's appointed to do important jobs cannot be expected to solve all these problems in just one year. Much to the contrary, it's going to take all of this term and if Trump wins, who, which depending on whether or not he runs, depending on his health and wellness in 2018, he, there's a possibility he might not run. But if he does, his odds of winning are extremely high. It'll take all of that second term as well. And even then, it won't be enough time for everything. Everyone talks about drain the swamp. And I, I, me, I want the swamp drained too. But we're talking about more than a hundred years of swamp development, of waters, dirty waters, raising and raising and raising to turn that place into a swamp. I don't know if you've ever drained a swimming pool, but it doesn't just drain in a few minutes. Hell, even bathtubs don't drain that fucking fast. So how the fuck do you expe expect to drain everything in the middle of the beltway in Washington? And I'm saying you, but I made the same fucking mistake. There is a plan. There is a strategy in place. But Jeff Sessions isn't going to 
leak anything unless he's absolutely pushed to the extreme to, and even then he's only going to give us a drop. Donald Trump has changed the way that he presents himself. I know people like to just say that he's never changed, but think about how he spoke during the uh, election cycle as compared to the changes in how he speaks up until today. There was a big, big response just six, seven months ago about how much nicer, how much more patient, how much more considerate Trump had become in most cases. And it wasn't until the last like two months that Trump has really started pushing. But who is, he's not pushing everyone. He was focused heavily on Kim, on Kim Jong-un. And he was doing that for a reason. He was having this verbal back and forth with Kim Jong-un because the fight allowed him to create a situation in which he was able to not only make up with Kim Jong-un, but he was able to build the start of something far greater. An ally on which he can rely to fight against China. I was absolutely wrong about Comey, and I'm probably wrong about more. And as I go through this uh, IG report, I'm going to do my best to let you know all the times I was wrong in the past, if I can remember them. If I've said something wrong in the past and I go through the IG report and you, you notice that it's something, your memory is probably far better than mine, so please, tell me. Tell me I was wrong so that I can clarify and move forward. <laughs> 